of God that feeds us this morning is from our gospel lesson previously read, specifically Luke 13, verse 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. So far our text, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Uh, Around noon on December 4th of this past year, Winston Moss, the assistant head coach of the Green Bay Packers, uh, tweeted something critical of Aaron Rodgers. He said, and I quote, Ponder this. What championship teams have are great leadership, period. It's not the offensive guru trend. It's not the safe trend. Find somebody. They were looking for a new head coach. Find somebody that is going to hold number 12 and everybody in this building to a Lombardi standard, period. Nine hours later, Winston Moss was fired. Criticism of something or someone that is beloved, especially by people in authority, can get you fired. And in the case of the prophet Jeremiah, it almost got him killed. Coincidentally, Jeremiah, like Winston Moss, was talking about accountability, expectations, leadership, doing the right thing. Jeremiah gathers all the people together in Jerusalem in the temple courts, and he says, Thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets whom I send to you urgently, I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. How do the people respond to this message from the prophet Jeremiah? The text tells us, When Jeremiah finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. So the people go out and they find the authorities of Judah, the power players, the people that be, they bring them together, they put together a makeshift courtroom in the temple courtyard, they stand Jeremiah in the midst of them all and they say, this man deserves death. Why? Because, and I quote, he has prophesied against this city. Sounds to me like Jeremiah has touched a nerve. And let me help you understand why. Jerusalem, in the Old Testament especially, it's not just a city. It's the city. And so for those of you who have been participating in our Lenten reading challenge and working your way through 1st and 2nd Kings, if you're on schedule, you would have read uh, 1st Kings chapter 11 where Solomon's many foreign wives turn his heart away from faithfulness to the Lord God. And so the Lord visits Solomon and he tells him, because of your faithlessness, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to tear the kingdom out of your hand. I'm going to tear it away from your son and I'm going to give it to someone else. And then he says, and I quote, However, I will not tear away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of David my servant, and for the sake of Jerusalem that I have chosen. The Lord is going to grant a sliver of mercy to Solomon and his family for the sake of a city. When the Lord uh, sends a prophet to tell Jeroboam the same thing that he just told Solomon, you get nearly identical words, but it's more explicit. He says to Jeroboam, Yet to Solomon's son I will give one tribe, that David, my servant, may always have a lamp before me in Jerusalem, the city where I have chosen to put my name. The Lord chose Jerusalem. Of all the cities in Israel, Jerusalem is where the temple is located, where the temple was built, and the temple is where God dwells. 
Jerusalem is the location where God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, has put his name. Jerusalem is now the place where all the sacrifices need to occur. Jerusalem is the one city in the entire nation that's known by that other name, Mount Zion. And so it is that the psalmists say, oh, that salvation would come out of Zion. And in their prayers they say, blessed be the Lord from Zion. He who dwells in Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Jerusalem is like God's favorite kid. I hope those verses and that background information help you understand what Jeremiah walked into and the nerve that he touched. (laughs) Because the Lord says, do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And that name of the Lord their God had been placed in Jerusalem. And so Jeremiah spoke a word against Jerusalem and it was interpreted by the people as an attack, not against the city, but against the man who put his name there, against the God who put his name there. Jerusalem is standing in for the place of God. You attack Jerusalem, you attack God, you attack God, you need to die. Well, here's the thing. Jeremiah didn't go and speak his own words. Jeremiah spoke the words that the Lord gave him to speak. It's God who's saying these things. And you see that occur again in our gospel lesson. It's not just Jeremiah who speaks a harsh word against Jerusalem. Jesus does it. And this is what he says. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. That's a remarkable statement from Jesus when you think of what he could said, what he could have said. Winston Moss, right? Assistant head coach, Green Bay Packers, tweets about Aaron Rodgers. Think of what he could have said. He could have called Aaron Rodgers a Super Bowl champion and a two-time league MVP because he is, but he didn't. He ignored all those blessings and wonderful uh, accolades and instead he calls into question his leadership, his authority and his ability to be held accountable by anyone. Jesus could have talked about Jerusalem as the place where God has put his name. Jesus could have talked about Jerusalem as the city of the great king, the hill of the priesthood of Melchizedek, the very home of God's own temple, but he doesn't. He says, Jerusalem, you know what you're known for? You kill the prophets and you stone those who are sent to you. It's a genuine lament. It's an honest frustration on the part of Jesus. He doesn't highlight these failures because he's in a mood. He doesn't want to drag Jerusalem's name through the mud before he shakes his dust off of his feet. No, this lament is said by God as a genuine lament. And as soon as Jesus gets done saying the thing about Jerusalem that's not flattering at all, he keeps walking toward Jerusalem. Jesus has just called Jerusalem a city that kills prophets, and as a prophet, he goes to the city. And you're never going to guess what happens when he gets there. Or you might. Because it's the season of Lent and we journey with Jesus to Jerusalem. And when he gets there, the city does to him what they do to all the prophets. They kill him. They reject their identity as the city of God. And they kill God's own son. But as Jesus has pointed out to the Pharisees in John 10, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And his life isn't taken from him, he lays it down of his own accord that he might take it up again. My friends in Christ, Jesus knew what he was doing. He knew where he was going and he knew what was going to happen to him when he got there. But he did it anyway. And he did it out of love and out of honor for the name of God. The name of God that had been placed on that city and on those people. And so Jesus went there and he died there. And he shed his blood there. And then he rose from the dead. 
And then, when Scripture talks about Jerusalem after that, well, it speaks of Jerusalem not as the city that kills the prophets, but in glowing terms. The Bible ends with the book of Revelation, and at the end of Revelation, we're told, Then one of the angels spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, its radiance like a most rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. The wall was built of jasper, while the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. First was jasper, then sapphire, then agate and emerald and onyx and carnelian and chrysolite, beryl, topaz, chrysoprase, jacinth, and amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. Wow, what a difference. They've gone from the city that kills the prophets to that. All because God put his name there and shed his blood there. You and I are like the city Jerusalem because God has put his name on you. Just as he did for the city of Jerusalem. It's literally how we baptize. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God has put his name on us. He's chosen you to be the bearer of his name. St. Paul says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So like Jerusalem, we have a temple where God lives in us. But unfortunately, like Jerusalem, we have a history of animosity and rebellion against God. Though we bear his name and all the marks and privileges of God, we still rebel, we distort, and we persecute. When fellow Christians have attempted to correct our misbehavior, we're more inclined to treat them like Jerusalem treated Jeremiah than we are to roll out the red carpet and thank them for looking out for our own best interest. When pastors have called us to task, for not taking seriously the word of the Lord or being indifferent to the truth. We have not returned to the Lord with sackcloth and ashes, but instead have entertained the notion notion of maybe the church down the street is a better fit for us, just so long as they don't make us feel so uncomfortable about our sins. This rebellion that we have has not actually scared God away. He has not rejected you in favor of someone else to carry his name, just as Jesus did not reject Jerusalem. Rather than rejecting us, he comes to redeem us. And so like setting his face toward Jerusalem, God sets his face toward you, and he comes at you with a purpose, like a shepherd looking for lost sheep. And when he finds you, he doesn't punish you. He throws you over his shoulders and rejoicing carries you back home. That's the love of God. Jesus could call us by name and then identify us according to all of our sins, just as he did with Jerusalem, but he doesn't. Instead, he calls us by name and he considers us radiant and glorious because of his shed blood. Precious stones, pearls, streets of gold don't even begin to capture the glory the Lord has given to us, we who are his chosen people. You and me, God has placed his name on you. And he's placed his blood on you. And now he clothes you all with his righteousness that we might be known, not according to our sins, but only by his grace and his glory. It is, as the psalmist said in chapter 91, verse 4, God will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you shall find refuge. And so here we are, and here we have. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.